Welcome everyone, Dr. Thor here. Let's get ready for Gnosis. Now, I want to cover in the book review here called Spirit Talkers, North American Indian Medicine Powers by William S. Lyon. Well, you know, I heard about this guy um, on YouTube and um, I listen to his interviews and so forth to find out where he's coming from. I mean, I've always found American Indians kind of strange and not really knowing what type of empowerments they claim to have, um, what they've done. And of course, like everybody else on this planet, um, everybody seems to be very corrupt and disconnected. Certainly the American Indians are not these great spiritual gods. They are known for their warfare with each other, by the way. And this is even documented in this book, where one tribe had up to 50 war parties going out at one time or another, and they used to rob and steal from each other all the time. So thinking that they had some great, uh, greater than others, uh, is absurd. And I find this with everybody. It's just amusing how the people who pretend to be the most spiritual or claim that they're the master race, which are nothing more than Arabs, uh, is quite amusing. And this is what you hear from everybody. So, you know, as with everything in life, there are no good groups. There's only good individuals, plain and simple. And those are hard to find. But it's always been a problem because uh, you see this with so many cultures uh, that tend to be poor that they really seem to have absolutely nothing. But you really don't know what's going on in these societies. Just the same, I have the same problem with the voodoo men and the African uh, powers and so forth. Um, there does seem to be some awesome powers here, but they're very... They ha they're involving people that don't know quite how to connect that to the real world uh, to make their environment better and don't seem to care about anyone else. I mean, the American Indians, uh, some of them, of course, with the gambling that's come, have made billions and other tribes have absolutely nothing. So they're not helping each other. You know, this is back to where it was before. There isn't one unified Indian nation. Uh, there are individual tribes, and they don't give a damn about the other ones. Most likely, if you go back to their history, which isn't that long ago, um, they were killing each other. So one of the reasons why the um, basic, quote, American uh, groups were able to take over the Indians so easily was the fact that they were fighting among each other. This is a classic story of divide and conquer that goes back to so many things. Uh, in Hawaii, the Polynesians, everybody loves King Kamehameha. Well, what king did King Kamehameha did? He united the uh, Polynesian tribes through war, of course. So he killed everybody and took over. So this is the story with all of these. And of course, this is something that we have to deal with in general to understand uh, what is going on here. Uh, but also, I have a big problem of people ignoring the great shamans that we have in this country, the United States. Well, people want to go somewhere else, Mexico, South America. Well, you know, we have great shamans here. The Hoodoo Voodoo people, the American Indians, um, all of these people uh, are great shamans with great abilities. It seems to me have been quite ignore, uh, ignored. And we go to people that write books like Castanetas to a Spanish culture, or Mexican culture, I should say. Um, and then we look other places, and people seek spirituality, like those phony baloney um, uh, Buddhist, uh, Tibetan Buddhist people. I've never found one that I would allow to cut my lawn. I found that any American Buddhist that I've ever found, I should say uh, European-American background, or I should say American background, have all been the most scummiest people I've ever met. Unbelievable uh, how rotten these people are. So we need to understand that and keep that uh, as well-defined here. Uh, what's very interesting about this book is that it actually talks to you and tells you about the actual going-ons uh, in many areas. Now, I had a little chat with the author here through his... Uh, uh, he responded to a comment that I put on his interview. And the comment was the fact that uh, uh, he talked a lot. He's an Indian worshiper. Uh, this is a problem. You can't be a researcher if you're a worshiper. If you think that these people have it all and do everything uh, and you idolize them, well, you're not a good researcher. You should always be 
um, while friendly and open, I don't, I personally, I don't believe in respecting anybody. So I'm not sure what respect means, but I'm certainly not going to give credibility to any authority figure. Question all authority. Believe no one is where I come from. So that doesn't mean treating people like garbage, but I'm not going to fall over them saying how great they are. There's nothing great about the Indian nations or what they ever achieved. Most of them didn't even get out of the Stone Age. Now, is that important? Well, I don't know if it's important. They didn't want to get out of the Stone Age. They, they live a very particular lifestyle, and that very particular lifestyle uh, uh, fits their uh, what they're into. And... Are we to judge? Well, what we do is for Westerners, we judge by the fact of how big is your houses, your castles, where did you evolve to from living on the dirt? Now, if you're forced to live on the dirt, that's one thing, but it appears that these people like to live on the dirt and they like nature and manifested not from making tools and having metals, but from using spirits and abilities to use and control their environment. So, uh, but I had a little discussion with him and said, well, you know, this is all nice lore. You're just talking lore here. These are stories you're passing on from others. Uh, even though he has claimed that he has spent 40 years with the Lakota Indians uh, doing his research. And apparently he has, particularly Black Elk and a few others he talks about. Um, who he uh, has spent years with going around doing their little medicine tours. Um, but what does that mean? Now, uh, one of the problems with him is that it is lore, unfortunately. Um, he doesn't write this book in any fashion of saying, I personally witnessed this. He's giving accounts that are 120 and some are 140 years old. Well, I think there's even older than that. There's some that are hundreds of years old that he's accounting from the original Christian missionaries that came to different areas. And... Um, He's giving accounts from their writings. Well, I'm not sure what to make of that. So, um, but they aren't, they are third party accounts. What I'd like to have him write a book on, and he didn't take pictures. There's not, and in this entire book, which is loaded with a giant bibliography, yawn, yawn. What other people said, that's what a big obviously says. Uh, it's not your conclusions, it's what they said. Yeah, I believe them, that's nice. Nah, they were the bookie. 545 pages and not a single illustration. No photographs, no nothing. So there's absolutely no proof that this happens other than this guy said it. Now, we can't live in that reality. We can't live in the reality of other people telling us what they do and then we believing that. It's just the nature of the world. And it may not be the fact that these people are tricksters or liars or trying to get your money. They could be just plain and simple delusional. I've been a lot around a lot of people like that, particularly in occult empowerment. Well, what can you do? Well, you know, it's a fun thing to get into, to try and use powers that are not really there. I should say use non-physical energies to make something physical. Well, that not that the ultimate? Well, it really is. So anybody can take a machine or do something, but can you use a spirit or an energy to manifest what you want in life, no matter what that is? Well, that's the ultimate. But the bottom line is that other than him recording on an audio tape recorder, Black Elves talking about his lore, what he happened, what he wants to tell you, um, to make his ego bigger, he has no proof of anything. Um, he's went through rituals himself and didn't get anything out of them, claiming that, well, I didn't really go to get anything out of them. I just wanted to just do it. Well, that's not a very good researcher in my mind. Um, the whole idea is that there is nothing to be shown. He has claimed to have witnessed some things, but you certainly won't get it from the book. And I don't think anywhere in the book I've had that I witnessed, I saw this, I did that, I was aware. No, it's all storytelling. He talks, as I said, uh, about things from third parties, what another person wrote. This guy stated that he saw this. This area had used this storm um, magic and other things. So, um, well, I mean, you know, and, there's, and he's looking at other written reports. Well, you know, this is the problem with researchers in this day and age is that they're not really researchers, you know, and I hear this all the time from the pseudo-intellectuals like Jason uh, Georgia 
Giuliani and so many other of them. And, you know, they're endlessly quoting other people's books. Uh, like, first of all, do we, they have now bought into what all the old idiots thought by saying, well, this person is an authority. Instead of using this as, you know, this is interesting information, maybe it's even a guide stick. But I don't want to hear you talk about someone else's philosophy, what someone else's uh, theories are. I want to find out what yours are. What conclusions have you come to? I don't need to do that. I'll read that other person's book. Why do I want to talk with you? And there's a lot of that right here. There's no conclusions here. There's nothing from him. He talks about, which is, uh, the book is interesting, really written where he's trying to use what is now understood as the occult sciences, which have always been valid, have now been taken on by common science called quantum physics. Quantum physics, even from common science aspects, has been proven beyond a shadow of a doubt now. They've done, quote, their scientific tests from their scientists and proven that quantum physics is a reality. Plain and simple. That's the conclusion. As far as I understand, it's irrefutable, except by a few really dumb people. You know, these are the same people that don't think the Earth's warming up when all of the ice has melted. What more do you need? When, when the water gets up to your top of your lips, you'll scream that I was wrong? <laughs> it's ridiculous. So the whole idea is that um, it is interesting written that way and saying how what states people are getting into. But, you know, it's a very poor understanding of these states as well as what he talks about. Getting into these quantum physics states, being able to alter your consciousness. I mean, what's interesting is that there is, while all shamanism, and this is a type of shamanism, are all the same all around the world. I mean, the rituals they're doing are almost identical to other things. And there's, uh, for those looking for practical information, there's very very little of that in this book, even though it does give you an idea in the bigger picture, if you're an advanced person like me, well, what were they doing to prepare themselves? You know, the individual rituals seem to be very individualistic. Uh, he talks about different charms and other things from different tribes to produce different medicine powers. Well, they're all different. They're not using eagle feathers all of them for one particular thing. One may use a stone with a hole in it, put it under their left arm. Another one uses eagle feathers. Uh, other ones will use a special different stones. Um, it goes on and on, animal parts, teeth, hair, and each tribe is a little different. Of course, this is what I've always told people is the um, you use what's in your area. So when the voodoo hoodoo people came here, they weren't using Caribbean uh, herbals. They were using where they were from herbals, and they were getting a lot of their lore, their understanding of magic, came from the American Indians, as were a lot of the hoodoo practitioners. And apparently uh, they... Um, uh, because they were both persecuted, apparently there was a greater friendship with the blacks to a certain degree, but I don't, you know, it's hard to trace all that. But that apparently makes sense, of course, um, that uh, they would be working with uh, people that saw the world with the same kind of view, other than the um, idiot view that they got from the basic white people that were in uh, North America at that time. <clears throat> So we all need to understand this, uh, of, of what is going on to get that complete concept. So, so he goes in there, and there's three or four pages of what people use for, let's say, weather control. And every one of the tribes use something different. And even practitioners within the tribe use something different. So <clears throat> all of this uh, comes down to a horrible um, problem with trying to figure out what people were doing. Uh, there are some practical things. Apparently, um, uh, the American Indian tradition, which again is very shamanic, is about purification. That's what all these sweat law. Apparently, sweat lodges were common among most Indians, where they would go in to purify themselves. The spirit said that you stink. They don't like the smell of you. And to purify yourself, you do that. You would fast. You abstain from sex. This is all typical shamanism. They all do this to alter their mind, to produce different chemicals, to get you into height. If you don't eat, you go into heightened states. Um, so anytime you do these things, these heightened states come along because you're trying to survive. And to be uh, to survival, it means your senses have to go up. Uh, so the whole idea, if you're not eating, it means you're dying. 
and you're dying because you haven't figured something out so your body kicks in and pushes you up to higher levels but purification is a big part of what they do um, but it also is dependent upon any other factors so and apparently their rituals which is one of the reasons why uh, these kind of practices uh, fall by the wayside is the fact that they're very long and difficult their priesthood made sure things were difficult to do took a lot so they could preserve their jobs because that's what a lot of this is too um, so if you have to take days and days of um, altering your consciousness and getting into different states well this makes things very difficult to do and impractical ultimately this is one thing the author cites the reason why the Indians died of so many diseases well it took too long and they couldn't treat enough people well this is what happened even with terrible modern medicine the use of pills um, <coughs> excuse me to uh, bring healing states regardless of the positive and negatives there can be done easily with billions of people at once so of course this kind of shamanistic and it's true of all shamans I mean it takes their time um, they don't seem to be able to affect large groups of people which makes them very impotent in war and other situations and of course this is true this is one reason why the superior military has always uh, conquered other gr groups of people who are spiritually very advanced over them uh, because it doesn't appear that they can generate enough of this to really affect people to the degree um, there also is a great um, conflict one of the reasons that Cortez took over was not the fact of him it was the cause of the fact that he found many many Aztec tribes that wanted their bigger slice of the pie he used the Aztecs against each other one of the oldest and most effective ways well this is true of the American Indians and what's even amusing about the um, American Indian wars with the US Cavalry is the Cavalry was a bunch of doofuses they were foreigners they could barely speak English they came from all sorts of different countries they had two bullets a month for target practice they had old guns the Indians traded for pelts and other things had all the finest uh, weapons they could get they had all the repeating rifles all the things uh, that they needed the Indians were armed better than the cavalry this is something that I've uh, read about recently which of course makes sense uh, the militaries have always been poorly uh, equipped and trained except recently when it takes over the United States and really is Americans business America's business is military so the whole idea is that um, with the lack of training all the other things in the military was just horrific so um, but they were um, they did not have the best weapons but the Indians fought against each other all the time I mean, even in this book he states that he knew one tribe that has many as 40 to 60 war tribes out at one time and they weren't fighting against uh, at this time in the records they weren't fighting against um, the invaders from uh, the Europeans they were fighting against each other and they used to steal each other's horses do all sorts of things so they were in constant conflict with other tribes and of course this horribly weakened them as it always does and this is the same thing that happened of course in the Crusades where the Crusaders in the first Crusade were able to conquer easily because there was nothing but a bunch of of tribes in the Middle East of course they did not own Jerusalem that was a Christian stronghold that was taken over by the Muslim Turks and um, but they were not organized well uh, the only way they pushed people back is when they finally got organized under Sodom um, Saladin uh, who by force by murdering a bunch of other Muslims he was a Kurd um, he united the tribes again and then fought the Crusaders that was the only time they really gained any kind of um, footholds against the Crusades so this is so true so I talked to him I said you know this is nothing but lore and everybody has lore uh, they're Mr. Lion and I've heard the most outrageous things in my life I've seen some amazing things and certainly there's these abilities out there we've heard enough about them I've seen some of it demonstrated um, 
and we certainly there is much more than I have experienced personally but you know anybody who's a serious researcher if you get into the show me state well okay you say you can do this let's do it is there something you can show me that has proven you are a person of empowerment and this always tends to be very difficult to find and uh, people don't like to demonstrate outside of their culture for obvious reasons because they've been murdered by everybody else. The Hawaiians don't want to do it. I'm not going to show whitey. They hate uh, whiteies. So they hate non-Hawaiians. They've taken all their land. They get a bad, they don't get any land back. All the jobs go to, uh, they, all they have is really slave labor jobs in Hawaii. It's all, uh, you know, cooking, cleaning, that's it. Uh, the top hotel jobs, restaurant jobs, well, those aren't going to Hawaiians. Uh, people come in. I mean, some of the most, uh, the hoteliers uh, who are famous are the Swiss that come in and run hotels and so forth. Well, last time I checked, Swiss, Switzerland wasn't close to uh, the Hawaiian Islands. So, I mean, this is the kind of nonsense that's going on. So, everybody is very much teed off and unhappy and rightfully so but the problem is this extends to everybody instead of the usurpers the robber barons the rich guys that exploit everybody including their own people but so you're not going to see a lot of this you go into the black community they're not uh, in africa they're not going to demonstrate to you maybe you can buy something of any of these people to a certain degree um but you know they're not going to give away their secrets and so forth and you can't go for a weekend seminar and actually uh, get anything out of it. I did go to weekend seminars with Rolling Thunder and he did produce some amazing uh, feats of healing and weather control and was able to demonstrate it. And of course, uh, apparently he, d he doesn't think uh, other Indians are powerful. When I told him that, he said Rolling Thunder wasn't an Indian. Well, he had power, buddy, and that's all I care about. Your Indians are better than my Indians, is that it? You know, that kind of shows you the low level this guy is coming from, which uh, I, I still wonder. Um, so the whole idea is that uh, you have to see things. Um, so it's just lore. And what he's doing here in this book is unfortunately a bunch of third-party statements that can't be verified. Is it fascinating? Yeah, it's very fascinating. How much of it is valid? I have no idea. Statements came from everybody from priests who said they saw amazing things happen uh, to a whole bunch of other people that said the amazing things happened. But they used to call the Indians conjurers, magicians. They were doing tricks. Um, now, is this true or not? How were they doing that? I have no idea. So They were claiming to create um, um, lightning intense, rain intense. Well, how did they do all this stuff? So... Uh, can we believe any of it? And someone's able to do that. Well, how could they do that through conjuring in terms of they built this whole stage in a teepee in some sort of area and then they were able to reproduce this for a group? Very interesting. And, you know, again, these are all the details that's very hard to, because, you, you know, this is how you have to go back and forth with someone when they're sitting in front of you to get these more interesting details. So they were labeled as nothing but conjurers and magicians by most of the white people who witnessed what the Indians did. On the other hand, uh, many whites went to the Indians, particularly when they were having crop problems. There was no rain. Well, this is a constant problem for hundreds of years or forever, for that matter. And supposedly they were able to get results. And there are wild stories of too much rain <clears throat> and it flooded some areas, and they killed the guy who created the rain. So, I mean, there's stories like this which certainly can be uh, true. Now, the, the controlling of weather and other things seems to be one of the primary little things that shamans did because everybody was so affected by it. Um, weather in general is a problem. You can freeze to death, sweat to death, your crops die, your crops get flooded. So this seems to be something that is universal and that shamans have been doing for thousands and thousands of years. And apparently there is enough to, um, of this to, um, to make it pretty much a fact that people can control weather. And we've seen this even in other areas, even from recent studies of how, I'm not sure how good they are, the PK man, 
uh, who supposedly was causing weather and other things. And this is not necessarily that difficult to do. So the, um, But we just don't really know what some of these things. I mean, it's been a very bad research done on all these people that leave so many holes that uh, it's, it's difficult to come to any real conclusion. Um, so, and the problem is these people uh, don't or don't tell you um, so many things that I would like to see in terms of the reality of it. But I think that may be naive as well. And that is, hey, look, you know, I'm rich and powerful. Uh, I did this with uh, my empowerments. Here's my Malibu house. Here's my Ferrari. Um, here we go. Here's all the bimbos. You know, this is what uh, proof of power is in this day and age. And you just don't see that in Western world. And of course, if you were to announce that, you probably would be murdered or they would arrive at your house with guns and use you for their purposes. So it may be naive to think that. Certainly, um, if you go into Africa, the uh, magical practitioners, the uh, um, medicine men, um, are very wealthy. They have cars, they have drivers, they have wealth. Um, these are people that are uh, the leaders in their society. They're semi kind of mafia type leaders. Um, so the whole idea is that certainly you can see that kind of empowerment in their own town. So you can't say they're not. They, they do quite well. And um, this goes with the Santeria people, the voodoo people, the hoodoo people, etc. Uh, they found a lot of these people um, when they uh, were harassed in different times and they had stacks of money in their house from people paid them and paid them well. But you can't go around necessarily showing this off, a famous hoodoo case um, where a guy was very wealthy. Well, here's a black guy, very wealthy, that all the white people are looking at. If you're too rich and spending too much money, well, there's going to be a problem there. They're going to kill you or take your money or whatever. I mean, so, you know, it isn't that simple. We think so in this day and age, but I think that's naive as well. There's so much more that has to go on. Uh, you just can't stand out there and say you've done it this way. You have to make it look like you made your money in another way, uh, whatever that may be. Uh, so th this is the problem with this. You know, when I'm as a real researcher, I look at these issues. Other people don't. As I said, this guy is a worshiper of Indians. He believes everything they tell him, and he's just in awe of it. Yet he himself personally has no abilities, has done nothing, and apparently I don't know if he's ever been helped or not. He listens to the stories of these guys uh, who are making their living this. What are you supposed to say? I'm not, I don't have much power, but I heard this other guy does. Are you going to sell that somewhere? And these people are selling their Indian philosophy for money and been traveling the country as he's been, uh, getting paid for talks because they're something special. So, but it just is lore. Now, what they've demonstrated or not, I've listened to many of these Indians in different interviews for over 20 years now and was never impressed by any of them. They also have seen to be very shy of healing people because of the legal problems, which again, just may be a realistic um, I have to wonder, though, is, is that really a problem, being an Indian shaman and working on somebody spiritually? I, I find that hard to believe, but it certainly could be a problem, considering how persecuted the Indians have been right up until the, uh, um, into the 80s, where there were even separate bathrooms for Indians. Uh, after the blacks, of course, that had stopped years before that. So it's all very, very problematical when we look at it uh, with all this. And people who have been annihilated and everything else, well, they're not going to be overly open to you. But here we are with Black Elk uh, spilling his mouth, um, diarrhea mouse talking to this guy. He's recorded all these things of what he said. But, you know, what someone says is lore. So what someone does is proven empowerments, and that's what we have. We have to see that, and that goes for anybody. What does this do? I mean, these people are claiming to have this. It's not just like everything else in life. I mean, we teach people how to empower themselves, and each person reaches a level that they're willing to do that for. Uh, so you add these empowerments to your life, and your life gets better, and that depends on you. These people are saying they're doing things uh, directly. So... Uh, everything from being impervious to bullets, to uh, by location, astral projection, all the things we've heard about, all the things that anyone who's read a Castanetis book, uh, these are the kind of things that these Indians claim they can do.
Uh, so it just goes on and on with these things. And um, how do we know what is uh, reality and what's not here? Now, as I said, the book is very, very fascinating. I do recommend it to everybody. I believe there's some sort of uh, PDF copy that you can buy from the author. Uh, the book itself is 28 bucks, uh, which is a fair amount for a book like this, considering it's basically historical. There's nothing, there's no how-to in it. It doesn't empower you. It doesn't do anything. So I think it's a little expensive for what it is. But it certainly is a very thorough um, description of what Indians died. And it goes through all these different things. But it is just lore. There's very, there's no proof of this. You know, he, he quotes books from 1860. Uh, that this person said that, this guy did that. Well, you don't have any proof that what these people said was right or not. So, And the descriptions these people give are quasi in a lot of ways. Yeah, they're powerful, yeah, they're not. Uh, well, we just, <laughs> you know, there isn't anything really clear here. And this is one of the problems with writing a book like this. And if you listen to him when he is doing his uh, interviews, um, he's stating everything as fact like he saw it himself. And I had to watch them a couple of times, and there's never a single statement out of his mouth that I saw this. I find him contradicting the fact that he wanted to get empowerments from a little empowerment by being buried alive for three days. Um, he originally said that uh, this was a great experience he got out of it. So he had this whole little spiritual thing happen, but uh, he followed that with saying, I got no powers from it. Then his second interview, he said that it wasn't his point to get powers from it. So, well, here we go again. I mean, you can either get empowerments or not. And uh, um, the difficulty of performing any of these shamanic tasks and the dangers of them and the physical stress of them. Imagine being buried for three days. Um, this certainly does all sorts of things to your mind and is starting to open up different survival channels, peaking all of your senses because you're trying to survive. These all have effects and, of course, allow you then to use non-physical energies through your senses to manifest uh, things without the use of direct physical tools. Uh, this is all part of the process. And, of course, uh, he goes into all this. And as I said, he goes into the quantum physics of it uh, in his own little way. And it is interesting that someone does that now, so it gives a little bit more credibility. But I'm not sure you can give credibility to uh, this. The highest form of everything is an advanced form of, quote, occultism, otherwise known as magic. So magic is when you're using... Um, energies that are not your own and manifesting with them and these things are not physical energies energies that we can't measure or uh, can figure out to control everything in life now there's really nothing higher than that and of course the the way the indians think and everything else i found very interesting here which shows why they can be uh, have the great potential to use these kind of energies the problem with us is that we keep falling into the same mechanical reality. You know, we used to talk about in the 60s and 70s, uh, we're a well-oiled machine. You know, so you, you saw your mind as a machine working in this particular way. Well, that brings in all sorts of different um, uh, limiting capacities. Uh, now we're a computer. You know, the human mind's like a computer. So, you know, we keep doing that depending on what our technology is. Now, shamans don't do that. Shamans are in touch with all the energies around them, physical, cosmic, spiritual, all the things around. So it's a way of thinking and operating. So if you think like a Westerner, you have limited your empowerment abilities. And this is something that all Westerners struggle with. And as a teacher, I struggle with trying to get people out of that reality as well as getting myself out of that reality. We're dealing with things that are constantly analytical in nature, meaning you're thinking in this particular way all the time, which is not the same of using uh, subtle energy physics, which is all about the things that are not measurable, that are not based in 
a tool making. You're talking about subtle energies, and we want to move past that as a society to try and make finer or better machines, as I'm producing now, consciousness-based machines, which access these energies. But in a way, of course, we're using machines to do that, but that is part of my tradition. Now, other traditions, which are these shamistic traditions, have no idea what machines are, and they're not interested in that. They don't have to worry about that. They don't think about things. Their mind tends to not run on constantly like the overburdened thinking mind of the West, which is constantly thinking, constantly go around in circles, while this is not the case with shamans. And he points this out in, in, uh, in um, many different pages of the book, which I do find very interesting. Of What is the mindset of these people? Now, uh, it appears they have a lot of these abilities. We don't really know. We don't really know what went on, what's going on, etc. So certainly um, these shamistic energies are very potent. Um, there's amazing things done by the African traditions, the Hoodoo Voodoo, the Santeria people. And of course, I haven't seen a lot of these personally, so I tend to wonder. But there are all sorts of, at least they have some pictures and other things of people levitating, uh, being engulfed by fire. We actually have these energy balls that uh, have been sent out after people that were created by shamans that are on film. Another thing uh, proving that you can generally film these spirit manifestations. So we have that on our actual um, YouTube page. Very fascinating. And I've looked at it, you know, many, many times. It must be at least 100 times trying to, well, is this some sort of uh, electric item that's going around? Does this look like that? What is this? And why is it moving in that erratic way? And then there are people that show bruises on their body uh, that were affected by this. And these are kind of these vampire spirits. So, and there's different ways of affecting these and uh, how to stop them, etc., and, of course, the person I was working with who sent me that uh, was very closed. They are not going to give out information. He certainly wasn't giving it out to Whitey, who may give it out to others. That's, he's paid for that. That's his career. So he's not going to tell you that. And that's one of the problems with all these traditions. They are professions. Um, so you don't go to a lawyer and say, teach me law. Uh, they don't sit down and give you a law course. Uh, they perform whatever they have to do, their own personal little sick rituals to go through their corrupt systems. So all of this is part of, and of what's going on, and people need to understand that, and that's part of the process here. So it's very complicated and rightfully so. You don't give your secrets away to everyone. But what is real, what is not real? Well, how do you make the sale? Well, I'll tell you how you make the sale. You make the sale by over exaggerating everything you do you got to make outrageous claims and people jump on this this happens even today of outrageous claims made by people and they throw thousands of dollars at them hoping that this is something that works and when it doesn't they just say ho hum i just went through this with a case with someone who hired a, a complete maniac um to make him very successful and when he sent this guy a thousand dollars and guess what it didn't work if you follow the correct path and say look this stuff is going to help you uh, very similar to the technologies that success success tech offers this is going to help you how is it going to help you well that depends on your life do you have opportunities can you make tens of thousands of dollars well then if you're empowering yourself you'll do now we have never had anybody fail but what people want is hollywood results and hollywood results are very rare because you have to fit it into your life if you're a stockbroker you can easily make 50 million dollars empowering yourself the average person well where's the money going to come from well, it's very difficult to make huge sums of money as an average individual. Get a raise, get a new job, money is left to you, never heard of. All these things have happened. Maybe you'll even uh, win a little scratcher and win five or six thousand dollars, or maybe even more. Uh, or go to the local casino. We've had this happen hundreds of times where people then walk out of there with five or six hundred dollars, but they can't do this consistently even when they're empowered. It's just the nature of these things. 
So it is not that easy. So how do we judge all this stuff? What is empowerment? What isn't? And um, what are we to make of all these things? So he's written several books. This is his latest one he's put out, which certainly gives you a great insight into the shamanic world of the American Indians that people should know about if you're interested in this entire field of manifesting occult sciences. Um, as I said, I had no idea that they were this heavily involved. We hear about all this stuff. You go to certain events, they do their dancings. Um, I personally um, have never been overly fascinated by that, but that's a personal thing. What does all that mean? Um, what does that do? How can you tell? And you go and see the kind of uh, poverty they live in or the corruption they live in, and you have to say to yourself, well, what is this all about? Um, so there's always major conflicts, but you know that's part of being in this world as well. You have to pick out the people of power, and they may not be people that are too bright or smart. Uh, I found this as well. I've known a lot of people with power, and they, you know, they're not very smart. They're not putting the pieces together. They're not working with the right people. Um, they don't know how to make money. So uh, they may be very good for you to hire because you have the way to make money. They have the empowerment. And you have to understand that. Just because they're poor doesn't mean that they can't generate money for you to a certain degree. So I know it sounds contradictory, but they don't have the smarts of how to have a business. They don't have the opportunities out there. But they may be able to send you great empowerments of that nature. Um, so we just don't know with all this stuff. But the one problem with this guy in particular, you know, um, and continued that, as you said, his Indians are better than my Indians. Now, it shows me he didn't do much research. Rolling Thunder was researched quite uh, deeply by a whole bunch of people. Now, what his background is, who cares whether he's Indian or not? Does he have power or not? And his response was very childish and very low level. Um, the bottom line is, is that uh, Rolling Thunder had power and demonstrated. That's all I care. Was he God? Well, are any of these Indians God? They're fat, they're overweight, uh, all of the stuff that goes on. They have horrible health. They have one of the highest alcoholism rates. Um, they have a fortune now in uh, gambling money. At least some of them do. And what are they doing with it? How are they helping their own people? I've never seen any great improvements anywhere. It seems to be a bunch of rich guys at the top skimming all the money. And they're certainly not helping a lot of other tribes. So here we go again with all of these types of situations uh, that are very, very difficult to make judgments with. And can you make? Well, I don't think you can judge by that. Because everybody is dirty and evil. I don't care who they are. So, is there a few people who can heal? Can they do this? Can they do that? I don't know. I haven't seen it demonstrated enough. But I'm certainly not going to believe the lore that someone tells me, especially when it's third party. He spent 40 years with these three different Indian shamans and basically has very little to talk about. I mean, if all those years, all he can talk about is being buried for three days himself and coming out with nothing? Well, what is that? He didn't talk about people being healed. He didn't talk about anything really happening. He pretty much, everything that he quoted in his interviews, as is in this book, is quoted from other people, from other sources, from other books people are read. Well, what value is that? And I have a real problem with that. The bigger the bibliography, the crappier the book. I don't want to hear other people's opinions. What did you personally see and witness? None of that, or I should say very little of that, is in this book or anything else that he comes out with. He's reporting what these, he records people, what's your lore? And of course, he's going to tell him all the old stories he was taught that came back from hundreds of years ago. Well, I mean, some people find these things treasures. I find them interesting lore. It's mythology. It's not meant to be anything of that. And if we want to believe these stories, then we're going to have to believe all the other stories. And there certainly is many of these things that have come out of Europe and other places who have been suppressed and murdered by Christianity. The point is there were all sorts of powerful shamans and still are in all over different parts of Europe. What? They're ignored? Uh, well, the point is, is that we're going back to these um, other stories... And there's plenty of stories, particularly has been documented in the last 2,000 years by the Catholic Church. They're called saints. 
You could call them shamans if you wanted to, guys they claim uh, floated up in the air, even spontaneously, and there are literally, supposedly, and again, it's at a time when, can we believe the reports? Literally floated up in the air, um, I think it was Cupertino, and he was known to just float. What is going on there? And documented hundreds of cases of this that by other priests. Can we believe this? I don't know what to make of it. But these are shamans. The saints were shaman, people who did certain things, healed people, had certain abilities. Well, these have been fairly well documented, but it still comes from a prejudiced source because it's documented by the church that these people belong to. So what are we to make of all this? Well, <laughs> it's like everything in life. It's a giant stew, and it's all kind of mixed together, and you have to kind of reach in there and grab something and see if it has value to you. But I'm not going to take any values from any researchers who said, I saw this happen. If you don't tell me that, and then I have to go by your personal credibility. That should be backed up by artifacts, relics, photographs, movies. All of this is there. Now, what happens with these things is what happened with the bozo boob heads of SRI. Ratzel Targ and how who uh, sold their soul to the CIA and continue to. Um, yet they photographed people like Yuri Geller, who has been disgraced, or at least uh, the unamazing Randy has had major impacts on this and actually even affected government and what we're doing today. So don't think that these things aren't important. Um, so it was on film, him doing everything. Now, whether he did this or that, and I've seen things, that spoke, I've, <laughs> I haven't seen anything to discredit him uh, strongly or not. None of it has. Uh, it all maybe could be, etc. But the bottom line is that it's just not true. So, there's documented film of him doing everything they stated he did, and they proved him to be a super psychic, plain and simple. Proved him. So, the bottom line is, is that everything that Randy has done against Yuri Geller has been a contrived case, from what I can see. Yes, there are tricks to do things. What does that mean? It doesn't mean anything that you can um, replicate something real with something fake. Isn't that what the movies do all the time? What does that mean? And anybody who's done it, seen anything in movies know how difficult that is to do in real life. Well, and we know how fake the movies are because a lot of stuff is too dangerous to, to repeat. So uh, it becomes this, a serious, serious problem. So you have to get in there and say, look, I saw this personally happen. And Jake Malata from 1812 recorded in his uh, papal manual that he saw a similar thing. Well, that's the correct way to do it. Not the fact to state that Jake... Uh, in 1812 uh, stated this. Well, that doesn't mean anything to me. That's, again, his opinion. And we have all these documentation, but they're not good enough because they're saints. They're white people, so they can't have any power. And some of them are white people, not them. all. No good because they're part of the Catholic Church, so they have no validity. Well, you know, they've written down everything. He's getting statements from the Catholic Church right now verifying that his Indians that he talks about here have power. Apparently, there are a bunch of books written by uh, the priests of what they encountered with the different native species of South, Central, and North America. Well, then we can't take the same witnesses for all the saints? You know, that's the one beautiful thing about the Catholic Church is that it's very, very pagan in its way of operating where they have these different saints and they have different statues and there's the mother energy, there's the father energy, there's the healer energy, St. Christopher the traveler energy. I mean, they have all these. And these are people that were supposed to have demonstrated some sort of abilities that you then are connecting to, otherwise known as the Christian shamans. So if we're going to take information like that, and we're going to take third-hand information, well, when we start doing that, the entire doors are open to everything. And quite frankly, if I had to go uh, to sources that I considered better, I would go back to papal sources, to different priests, 
friars, etc., whose job it was to contact uh, different Indians, live with them, and giving their observations. Now, the problem is, is, is their observations ultimately of great value? Well, no, because they're coming from prejudice. But are they describing something that happened or not? Is a person healed, not healed? Well, they seem to have been honest in that area. We don't know. But we then have to take that and put it into all the other writings made by these same people and stop giving credit to one thing over another. So this is important to understand, yet it is ignored. So if you're going to give me third party, it said in this, I don't need that. I'll read the other books. What's the point of this? I really despise this as a researcher. When you get people on, and you know, this is so typical of the pseudo intellectuals, the Terrence McKenna's, the Jeffrey Mishlas, the Jason Giordani's, they go out there and, yeah, I read back in Kant said, or this was in this book. I don't think for myself, I read this and now I'm regurgitating it on you. What is that? I don't care about their opinions. You're not them, and I'm not even sure you interpreted it right. Who cares what they said? What is your opinion? And, of course, you are giving me your opinion, because who knows? You're quoting a book? What is that? It's absurd. And that's, of course, what he's not. Here's a guy who's lived 40 years, and we don't have anything that he is stating. He should be stating his 40 years with these Indian shamans and what he personally witnessed and follow that up with recordings that actually he has made. That's the one thing he did. No photographs, no anything else. Uh, the same old story with uh, all of these things uh, that we have out there, which are serious problems, as you see on YouTube. No proof of anything, just head stalking. Um, uh, you know, that's interesting to a certain level, but it shows that you're on a very low-level understanding if there's no proof. So the whole idea is there's never any proof, there's never any pictures, they don't cite anything. It's the same old story. Let's get into some data. If you're a data man like some of these pseudo-intellectual parapsychologists with goofball certificates from colleges that don't teach that subject matter. So you go to a plumbing college, here you go, here's your certificate and fly on a plane. Uh, what? Here it is, fly on a plane. Well, you don't have any courses in flying a plane. Yeah, we got one college guy here, uh, he likes model planes. This is what you're getting. So it's very important that you understand that. It's not within it. But it is a good uh, basic book. I would try and find an inexpensive version of it because there really isn't anything practical here. But um, what he claims that the uh, American Indians, and you have to read between the lines, uh, done, there is a little bit of practical in how they purified, some herbs they use. So you can go in and take this information out of there for you practical manifesting scientists out there um, who want to get little tidbits and are doing it tradition say well maybe that's interesting but what does it tell us in the more practical picture well it goes back to the things that have always been to empower yourself you have to trance out you have to get out of common belief systems and thinking so what do you do well you mess with your head man sit in a tent and sweat for two days yeah well that's going to get you uh, certainly in an altered state they do a lot of dancing and drumming and singing Classic ways to get in altered states. Um, they have used, and there was even shamans who were whiskey shamans, <laughs> who were able to manifest whiskey when they wanted to. And this was used as an alternate drug as well. And um, smoking, you know, tobacco is very toxic. It's a very dangerous plant, actually, if you eat it. Uh, it uh, two cigarettes you can make into a poison to kill somebody with. Uh, so the whole idea is you have to understand how these things are. So tobacco isn't this thing that we all think hangs out of these stooges' mouths that smoke today. Uh, the tobacco plant itself is not very good for you and can be deadly. There are different varieties of it that are very dangerous. People don't get that. So uh, the whole idea is that people would uh, go into these altered states to doing all sorts of things. And, of course, this is going to get you in touch with the subtle energy physics of everything, meaning you're going to get away from the physical world, that's an illusion, into the world where you make everything. And this is, uh, I don't know, I almost use the term polluted with, but, I mean, it kind of is with all sorts of bizarre spirit energies and other things that are there. And you're able to grab these and bring you back. This is typical shamanism, no matter whether it's in Australia or in North America.
So um, we have these very um, interesting ways of looking at things, but there is a similarity there. Uh, people do fast. Um, they're purifying it. Now, I don't think that this is a purification because you're not really releasing toxins, so to speak, but you are altering your consciousness. Not eating is not normal. Your body goes into survival mode. If you stress the body by sweating all the time or doing other things, well, this is stressing the body. And there's all sorts of things. The easy way is obviously just to take a drug, ayahuasca, other things. Well, boom, none of that had to happen. You didn't have to do much of anything. The drug did. That's why people love drugs. And I sympathize with them. And I'm a believer in using natural consciousness alterers, uh, which are marijuana, alcohol, uh, ayahuasca, mescaline, all these things. Uh, and you have to be careful with these stronger things and do them carefully. But you know, these are shamanic tools uh, that have been used for thousands of years and they have value because they're so damn strong. Boom, you're knocked into that whether you like it or not. And I don't know if every, what percentage of people have the good trips or bad trips, uh, it's hard really to say. So uh, all of these things are um, necessary tools, but there are some of that given to you. And there are some, as I said, uh, practical things. You can kind of figure out a little techniques that uh, these shamans were doing and try and incorporate it into your practical reality, which is what success tech is all about. We use technologies, which this is the shaman technology, uh, to in modern times. There's nothing wrong with using ancient shamanic or empowerments in modern times. Why not? Ancient grimoires, ancient books of magic. These are all things that are manifesting technologies. Why aren't you using them? They're there. And of course, here is shamanism. How do you use that to empower yourself? Or even go to shamans who manifest for you. You know, you don't have to do everything yourself. You can buy these people. Now, there are many outrageous stories, killing animals without touching them. And this was supposedly demonstrated. Um, so they could, um, uh, they claim all this with hunting and everything else. So, yet, I mean, they've always hunted. This can't be something that is done too easily. But certain shamans had those abilities. Certain shamans could find game all the time. I mean, it goes on and on with this, had warlock, other things. And um, some of these great shamans um, and chiefs uh, apparently got through all these conflicts without being hurt or hit or shot you know, they're being shot at all the time. So what are we to make of this? So um, there's so much of this in the book and it is certainly interesting to look at. And uh, if you're an advanced practitioner, you can pick out little bits and pieces and hopefully incorporate them in your life. But as a bigger picture, like so many things, very bad research by a guy who has a, apparently, I believe he has a PhD, um, Yes, he does have a PhD from the University of Kansas. Um, and I believe he was, I'm not exactly sure. Oh, anthrop anthropology. He has a PhD in anthropology. So certainly should know better researching methods, but none of it's here. It's just, it's putting out like all this stuff is fact. And that's how he talked about it. When I went in there and told him that this was lore, he was insulted by that. Well, the point is it is lore and you have witnessed yourself very, very little. And that tells me that ultimately there's very, very little power there. And what somebody's grandfather did, what grandfather's grandfather, what he heard another tribe did. And this is coming from black, uh, elk whatever he heard again is hearsay it's lore and one shaman is going to say how tough he is over the other one that is the human nature and certainly the indians were far from being perfect as we consider they robbed and murdered and raped each other these are not people that are looking for a higher path they're looking to uh, live in a primitive egotistical world which means they're going to lie like a rug like everybody else does to make themselves special and to get more of that cash, sex, mujo beans, whatever it is that they value, whether it's just the um, reputation in a tribe, they're going to do whatever it takes to do that. Now, how long you can get away with that without being proof? Well, isn't that part of the game of life? So this is all part of it. And um, uh, 
something to consider. But like everything else, question all authority and believe nothing. And books are really uh, something that you have to take that adage and apply it vigorously. Until next time.